Nigeria. This is the final installment of the new Nigerian economy panel at the Africa CEO Forum, and this uh, concluding part. Uh, that was started last Friday, uh, discussed the state of Nigeria's entertainment uh, music industry. Um, I'm sure you've known this one, a sector that is growing, uh, just about 0.2% of the GDP for now. But if you look at what uh, that sector brought in into our Q4, uh, our GDP numbers, that was quite significant. And the government is interested in investing. But there's still a lot more to be done, of course, which the administration is looking at in terms of the executive order to protect what you call copyrights and patents and things like that. So these were some of the discussions. Of course, not to forget technical, or what you call financial technology, in not just in banking, but also in agriculture and getting youths uh, to wear bow tie, so if, it's, if need be, according to Akumi edition, and get on to the farm. Let's take a listen to this panel for a few minutes. Uh, you will enjoy some of it. I was with the Edo State Governor a few days ago, and he was telling me about how a couple of Chinese came went into the middle of nowhere, set up a factory in there, and today there are two things they are doing that the, uh, Edo State has become the largest of. The first is the recycling of uh, steel, metal, so they started picking up all the broken cars, everything, and recycling metal, and they're the biggest in that now. And second, glass making. And they, so it's becoming an industrial hub in glass and steel uh, recycling. No one would have known that. And you're finding those kind of opportunities. So to anyone who's coming and looking at Nigeria, please look away from oil. Look at gas, but not oil. <laughs> but seriously, look away from that and just begin to discover that Nigeria has a lot more to offer than just oil and gas. You mentioned media and, and music. You go to a, a nightclub in Abidjan and you'll hear Niger music, I'm told. You go, to, you, go into, <laughs> you go to Nairobi, you go to Kinshasa, you go to Johannesburg, Niger music. I, I'm not sure that Nigerian musicians are making the most of that. Um, are, there, are there things that the government needs to think about in terms of intellectual property, contract law, um, to try and help, you know, add more value, as it were, to this sector? No, but, but I believe the government has started doing that. It's taken time, because at the beginning, when they started, no one was protecting them. There was no uh, royalty that was being paid. The pri piracy was incredibly high. They were taken advantage of uh, all across board. But they, I know that there is a piracy law that has been, I'm sure it's been passed now, it's going through the National Assembly, uh, which is working towards that. They were now paying a lot of attention on that. Uh, both the Lagos State Government, the Ministry of uh, Information has been working on ensuring that they are looking at the heritage of Nigerian music, Nigerian arts and culture, and the movie industry, and now taking it as a serious step, understanding that it's taking a lot of young people off the street and going into the creative talent area uh, of business. So it's happening. Is it happening fast enough? No, but it's the direction, as you and this is, is the direction right? Absolutely. Now, I say, I speak to lawyers, for example, and I say to them that there's a huge gap in piracy law that needs to be taken, copyright laws, piracy laws. I'm going into technology as part of the business in the energy sector, and I keep saying to everyone, including my legal staff internally, that they need to begin to fight the piracy and copyright laws and uh, patent laws for the things that we're coming up with, apps in the energy sector, because it doesn't exist. And so we're finding out that we have to create that knowledge internally to go out and do it. Um, in Bielsa, what sort of structures do you have uh, to engage the private sector? Can you sit them all down in a room? Uh, can you help funnel investors to them? How, how are you connecting them to uh, opportunity? Well, first of all, let's, let's make it clear that the, the, the governments, governments, including mine, and uh, the private sector captains of industry need to work together. Uh, the, the motives are sometimes different, but the private sector starts out to make profit, which is good, fine, we should encourage that. And the government is out there for public services and the public good and regulation and all of that. But the two must tango uh, for there to be prosperity because the end result of all of this is uh, the issue of how we have uh, 
made life more meaningful, how we have uh, expanded the boundaries of prosperity. Uh, and so that's it. And knowing that, therefore, in Bielsa, we have, in the past six years, uh, taken very deliberate steps, beginning with the establishment of the Bielsa Investment and Promotions Agency, and the Director General is part of my delegation here, uh, and we have an idea of uh, what, is, what is possible in the state and what kind of supports we can give. Uh, we're also doing uh, things in, uh, with respect to the ease of doing business. When uh, Yewande spoke, she didn't mention Bielsa, surprisingly. Um, but in my state, for example, we have liberalized title uh, certification. Uh, when you invest in land, you don't wait for months and years to get a certificate of your title. That was one of the first things we did. We put in place the automated title uh, certification uh, program. We call it the BEGIS. Uh, within 30 days, uh, you can get your title to land. That's a significant step. It makes title to land and therefore land, which is an important factor of production, bankable. So it gives value to that. And uh, we also have a system by which we not only encourage investors to invest. Once we identify your interest and you indicate interest, even in this hall, you are interested in investing in gas to power, gas to liquid, gas, all of that. You are interested in agriculture because Bielsa also is aspiring to be the, the agricultural hub. Whether it is palm plantations, huge palm plantations, I mean, before the discovery of oil, the whole of uh, Niger Delta area, where Bayelsa is part of, uh, used to be known as the Oil Rivers Protectorate. The oil they were talking about wasn't crude oil, uh, which uh, Tony is a major uh, trader investor in, but palm oil and its derivatives. So the place to be where you don't need a fertilizer to, to plant anything uh, is Bayelsa. So if you indicate interest, for example, my team, the way we work, the way they work, is that we take that business proposal as ours. It's, not, it's no longer yours alone. And we give all the support. We collaborate with federal agencies where approvals are needed. Because we have a, a, a fairly peculiar federal structure. Uh, Tony alluded to that. And the need for federating units, uh, subnational bodies like my state, to have more powers to be able to determine even some of these economic issues. And there's an ongoing healthy conversation in my country back home uh, as, to, as to how fast that should happen. Uh, but even within the current uh, systems, we have our team that works with uh, investors to see how we can make things possible. For example, the emphasis on the eco-industrial park. Once we indicate interest, an investor doesn't need to bother uh, himself or herself about the issue of land. We have already provided that. So that's a major burden taken away. You don't need to bother yourself about access to gas, access to power, therefore. We have already covered that. We have made the initial investments. So with these steps, I believe that uh, our state is on course for uh, industrialization. And let me make one final point. Toy alluded to it also, that Nigeria is a vast country with endless potentials and possibilities. And Investors very often make the mistake of only looking at Lagos or Abuja. Nigeria is far, far more than Lagos and Abuja. You have states like mine that have been at the forefront of the oil and gas industry since 1956 till now. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have enough, you know, inflow in terms of investors and their footprint. But now that the country is diversifying, and our state is also at the forefront of, of the diversification uh, move, we are open for business. Like I said at the beginning, uh, investing in Nigeria is good business, but investing in Bielsa is better business.